Hare Krishna, dear devotees. It was announced today that uh, class is given by Her Grace Kartamisha Mataji. It's not me. Uh, I'm just uh, helping out because she had had to cancel the class. So today we are reading from Bhagavad Gita, uh, chapter 3, text 17. Chapter entitled Karma Yoga. So we are reading the verse. Please repeat after me. Yastvat maratirs evasyad. Atma triptas chamanavaha. Atman yevas chasantushtas. Tasya karyam navidyate. So now we go word for word. Please repeat after me. Yaha. Yaha. One who. One who. Two. Two. But. Atmaratihi. Taking pleasure in the self. Eva. Eva. Certainly. Certainly. Syat. Syat. Remains. Remains. Atmatriptaha. Self illuminated. Cha and, and Manavaha, Manavaha. A, man. a man Atmani, Atmani. In, himself. in himself Eva, Eva. Only. Only Cha, Cha. And. and Santushtaha, Santushtaha. Perfectly, satiated. Perfectly satiated Tasya, Tasya. His. His Karyam, Karyam. Duty Na, na does, not. does not vidyate, vidyate exist. exist. But for those who take pleasure in the self, whose human life is one of self-realization and who is satisfied in the self only, fully satiated, for him there is no duty. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada Ki. A person who is fully Krishna conscious and is fully satisfied by his acts in Krishna consciousness no longer has any duty to perform. Due to this, due to his being Krishna conscious, all impiety within is instantly cleansed and effect of many, many thousands of yagya performances. By such clearing of consciousness, one becomes fully confident of his eternal position in the relationship with the Supreme. His duty thus becomes self-illuminated by the grace of the Lord. And therefore, he no longer has any obligations to the Vedic injunctions. Such a Krishna conscious person is no longer interested in material activities and no longer takes pleasure in material arrangements like wine, women, and similar infatuations. Om Agyanati Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Stapitam ye na bhutale, svayam rupa kadamayam, dadati svapadantikam. Vande ham shri guru, shri juta padakamalam, shri guru vaishnavamscha, shri rupam sagrajatam sahaganara gunatan vitam tam sajivam, sadvaitam savadutam parijana sahitam krishna chaitanya devam. Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamshya E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha 
Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadathar Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So today's verse talks about a person who is fully satisfied and satiated within the self. So self, there are many definitions what can we call self, the mind, the body, but the real self is the soul. And the soul is not just some kind of abstract entity, some kind of uh, um, ball, ball of light or something just floats in the air or something unclear. The soul actually has its own beautiful form. The soul has its name. Soul has not even it, but his or her clothes and ornaments. And in that way, soul supposed to exist in the spiritual world as an eternal associate and servant of the Lord. So, but because of the nature of jiva, which is tatashta, which means marginal, here, there, there, here, Prabhupada explains in the many, many places that actually jiva always have this tendency go here and go there. So right now, us here, we have come here. So means our beautiful spiritual form and beautiful spiritual ornaments, beautiful spiritual clothes is covered by this gross and subtle body. And our beautiful spiritual name, which is our eternal name, also is forgotten. And we identify ourselves with our name. So in that way we can see that uh, our existence is here bound in this material world due to identification. And it's not just because I, I joined ISKCON yesterday or I joined ISKCON 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 years ago I have become spiritual just by joining and learning few prayers or attending Mangalarti. Spirituality is actually the consciousness. And as much as we identify with the body, this much less we are actually in spiritual consciousness or Krishna consciousness. So the whole process of this uh, bhakti yoga is to change, shift our consciousness from material identification to spiritual identification. And once and the person who has reached that full Krishna consciousness, the spiritual identification, it is said such person has no duty to perform. And it is just a logical, because what duty he is here? Because his mind is, and soul, his existence is fully spiritualized. He is full in Krishna consciousness. Like here it said, a person who is fully Krishna conscious, and a fully is italics. So it means it's emphasized. It's fully Krishna conscious, and is fully satisfied by his acts in Krishna consciousness. So what is his acts in Krishna consciousness? So acts in Krishna consciousness is, is service. And service, devotional service, it's described in nectar or devotion, consists of nine processes. Shravanam, Kirtanam, and so on. Until Atmanivedanam. So one who is fully satisfied and satiated within these nine activities, that person can be called, is satisfied by these type of activities. But if somebody feels they need to do something more, something extra, something else. So that means it, the person is affected by certain kind of desires, which also can be dovetailed in Krishna consciousness by offering results to Krishna, by offering the thoughts to Krishna. But really devotional service, according to the definition of nectar of devotion, which is one of very important Prabhupada books, is said that it, nine, devotional service or bhakti yoga consists of nine processes. So also Prabhupada in his lecture on this particular verse, he says, 
our whole trouble of life, this material existence, it is, according to Vedic literature, this is our, our condemned life, material, because I am put into different atmosphere, this body, which I am not. The body is matter, and I am spirit soul. So I have been put into uncomfortable position by the material contact. So that's what has happened to Jiva. They have come in contact with material energy, and it is uh, described as an uncomfortable position. And we have so many duties in this type of po in this position. Why? Actually, the duty comes because of desires. We have duties because of our desires. If I want to get married, my duty is to take care of my wife, or if I am a wife, my duty is to take care of husband. If I want children, my duty is to, to feed the children. But if I don't get into these things, then I don't have duty to feed children because I not have a desire to have them. But it's of course, Prabhupada writes, we will read later, it's not a, this Krishna consciousness activities, it's not just an idle life of irresponsibility. So better not have all these things and I just live a peaceful life. This is also a kind of desire for sense gratification. But the matter of fact that duty comes from our own desire. And this duty is just like a, like a payment for that desire. That this desire becomes legal desire. It becomes licit desire. That there is no enjoyment in some kind of illicit way. So, every soul which is here in this material world is bound by these desires and Prabhupada writes, it is a li life of troubles in this material existence. But, in a human form of life, a person is eligible to understand this fact and he has choice to take up some kind of process to get one himself or herself free from this type of life of trouble. Yeah? So Prabhupada writes, the whole process of human civilization should be to acquire love of God. Our love is now distributed in so many things and that is misdistributed. The whole thing was to be targeted to Supreme Lord. I was to love God, but instead of God, my life is distributed to so many things and that is misdirected civilization. So, the real only duty of Jiva is to love Krishna. This is the only duty of any soul, whether it's a human, whether it's an ant, or a cricket, or a bird, or a fish. It's Jiva is Jiva. This is just a material covering. So every Jiva's duty is to love Krishna. But because we are misdirected, we distribute this love in different other directions. And that's how the duty of this material world comes in. But someone who has, already, has awakened that love of God, so there is no other duty except to serve the Lord. So Prabhupada writes, how is it misdirected? Suppose if I do not love God, if I love my wife, my children, my countrymen, what is wrong there? Oh, there is great wrong. That you don't know. That is most unscientific. Without loving God, if I want to love my wife, that love is not perfect. Therefore, so-called love is disrupted by divorce and so many things because that is not perfect love. We do not know what is perfect love and how to conduct it. That is a defect of our civilization, which we are accepting as love that is simply a desire for sense gratification. That is not love. Love is different thing. Why the love is defected in the material world? Because it is not properly discharged. We have to understand that thing. So, Prabhupada says that love in material world is not properly discharged. Why? Because there is some portion that we keep 
for our own self interest. We love we love someone in this material world because we get something for our for from it for us. Of course, when we love Krishna, we also feel so much pleasure. But actually, it's said that pure love is. It's also a definition of pure love is that even if there are all the causes of separation due to some distress, that separation doesn't take place. And the topmost example is with Radharani and Krishna. That even Krishna left to Mathura and, uh, and uh, said he will come, but he actually didn't come. And for hundreds of years, the Radharani was just on the verge of dying. But the reason she didn't die, she said, what if Krishna comes and I'm dead? What will happen to him? So I should not die. So for her, easier was to die. But she didn't die because she was thinking that Krishna will be so much distressed and it will not give Krishna any happiness. And we know the famous statement how Radharani says, that if my distress is cause of Krishna's happiness, I'm ready to suffer. So that is pure love. And, but in the material world, no one is ready to do for anybody, even if it's a family member, even if we stay, we love so much, so much, so much. But still, if it's a real, really suffering so much that it's, death is better than being with that person, then we will try to be, avoid this person or complain somehow. But we will not say, like in Chikshastika prayers, even if you break my heart, you are still my Lord. So, because it's selfish, and in the material world it's just understandable, this is the nature, that's why we are here, out of selfish desire. So we have to, we have to transform this consciousness, and this is uh, what means to follow the footsteps of Rajbasis that we hear also Prabhupada suggests us to do, to develop that selfless, selfless attitude, selfless devotional service. That's a main feature of love of, in Braj. Without this type of love, without this type of attitude of selfless love for Krishna, the life becomes aimless. Prabhupada writes, our, says, our life has become without any purpose. We do not understand why this human life we have got, why it is distinct from the dog's life, or the hog's life, or the animal life. Why do not understand, we do not understand that. We have to understand that this human life is not meant for the animal propensities of like life, like cats and dogs. It is meant for some other divine purpose. We have to get rid of this material engagement and attain our spiritual life and be happy forever. One has to return back to kingdom of God. That is the mission of human life. So here Prabhupada is very clearly saying, what is our mission? And our mission is to return back to Krishna, to spiritual world. And we should utilize all our assets and resources to attain this, um, to, to fulfill this mission. Prabhupada continues in this lecture. He says, now at the present moment, the best sacrifice, yes, because just going back a little bit, this chapter was talking about sacrifice, <coughs> that everyone has to perform some kind of sacrifice and Prabhupada starts this lecture by saying how this material world is so miserable and all this is because of our desire. But human life is meant for, transform, for transformation. <coughs> human life is meant for a change of consciousness. So how to attain it, how to do it, so there is some kind of sacrifice to be performed. As we all know, whatever we want to attain in this life, whatever result we want to get, some kind of tapasya we have to do, some kind of sacrifice we have to do, something, some endeavor we have to do. Even if cat wants to catch the mouse, 
he will sit near this mouse hole for hours and hours and hours waiting till the mouse coming out with his head. Everyone, even in the material world, you want to become best student, you really have to work hard. I was speaking with someone, they were saying that I so much wanted to be best student, I was asking, what's your hobby, one young girl? You have some hobby or something, some skill you can do? She says, no, I don't have any hobby, I don't have any skill, because my whole time went to become best student in the school. <laughs> so she was only studying. So something, always there has to be something. And also Krishna, for a human specifically, has given also something, some sacrifice to attain that goal of life. So Pr Prabhupada says now, at the present moment, this present moment now, the best sacrifice is recommended in Srimad Bhagavatam, the sacrifice of chanting the holy name of Lord. Yagya Sankirtana Prayai Yajanti Hi Sumeda Saha. So now you come here and sit down here for some time and chant the holy name of the Lord. That is also a sacrifice. That is also a sacrifice. This is recommended for this age specifically because we cannot make any other sacrifice. So in this age, this is a recommendation. So we have to take it very seriously that this Sankirtan Yagya is the way how to transform the consciousness. It doesn't mention other activities. Specifically, this activity is meant for transforming our consciousness for, from selfishness to selfless love of God. So, and as we understand, like I was mentioning, the young girl, she was so much absorbed in her studies that she forgot anything else because she really very quickly wanted to attain that status of best student. So the same we can also understand that if we perform Sankirtan Yagra very little, then transformation will take place very slowly. But if we perform Sankirtan Yagra a lot, then it will take very fast. So sometimes devotees, when I give Bhagavad Gita class, one senior devotee asks me, oh, I have been devotee 30 years, 35 years, but I don't feel anything change. In me. And many times, not to me, but every time we hear some, here or there, this question appears. So then we need to ask our question, how much this Sankirtan Yagya I am performing? I am not asking you to give any report to me, but you can check yourself. How much of Sankirtan Yagya, the chanting of the congregational chanting of Holy Name, you actually perform? How much you perform? And then you can see from this much amount, big or small, how much chance is there for transformation? And if you really feel that you want to attain this love of God, then you need to do that, this process. And sometimes maybe we perform, oh yeah, I'm doing one hour a day, one hour a day, two hours a day, I'm doing three hours a day, but still it's not working. Then maybe we are so sick, then we have to do more. We have to increase the dosage to actually get cured, you know. When you have a headache, you take one pill and it doesn't work. So naturally you reach out for a second one because you really determined to get rid of this headache. So this material existence is like a big headache and the Sankirtan Yagya is actually a powerful medicine. So it should not be taken for granted. Srimad Bhagavatam is saying it, the Acharyas are saying it, and they are also doing it. So Prabhupada continues, he says, it is the most inexpensive performance of Yagya. Anyone can adopt it just to learn these 16 words. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. These 16 words, anyone, any illiterate man, or any rich man, any poor man, or any man in, of any country, these 16 words anyone can learn and chant and go on chanting. There is no expenditure. Suppose if you are moving on a street and if you go on chanting, there is no expenditure and there is no loss. And if you notice one small detail what Prabhupada says, to go on chanting. Yeah? 
So it means it has to go on. No intervals. It just has to go on. And actually, Prabhupada writes in other places that, of course, the chanting also has to be offenseless. But really, Prabhupada says, how to o really overcome offenses and clear the effect of offenses is this in uninterrupted chanting. Continuously chant, where is the obstacle? Even if someone suddenly holds our tongue and not allow us to chant, our mind can be also a great tool of chanting. So Shil Prabhupada says, there is no expenditure and there is no loss. Suppose you are sitting on the bus or the car for two hours. For two hours, if you go and chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, then tremendous result. Yeah? So not waste time. Why we have to talk so much? We don't need to talk. We can just chant instead. Yeah? So why don't you try it? There is no expenditure. There is no loss, neither loss of time neither loss of money, neither loss of energy. There is no loss, simply and melodiously, in a singing way. If you go on, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, you will be directly associating with the Supreme Lord. You will be directly associating. And this is very important. If we really have faith that this holy name is Krishna, because this is how Krishna has come in Kali Yuga for our benefit. So we must have faith that Krishna and his name is non different. So then, when we chant it, we actually need to understand that we are associating with the Lord. It is made so easy. Why should we not take advantage? But the problem is that we have no faith that this holy name. And Krishna is non-different. Or we have very little faith. Or just some theoretical faith. And this is a, actually Nama Aparada. If we don't have full-fledged faith that the Holy Name and Krishna is non-different, it is Nama Aparada because that's one of ten offenses. Not to have full faith in the Holy Name. So to get rid of effect of this offense, we have to chant continuously. Always. Otherwise, how can there be any progress if we chant offended name? So this is what um, Prabhupada writes. He says, So all this entanglement is there, but actually I'm pure soul. I'm not this body. As soon as I understand this, then the whole thing is vanished. You see? Because I am not this body. Then, in a relationship with this body, whatever I have expended, my extended selfishness, is that at once vanished. Yeah. Once we understand that we are not this body, all this selfishness is vanished. I am liberated soul. So Lord Chaitanya says, by chanting the Shri Krishna Sankirtan, I became at once liberated from the misconception of life. So here we need to also point out it's Sankirtan. He doesn't say we need to chant Shri Krishna Japa. We need to chant Japa, but the actual real process is Sankirtan. So that's what we have to dedicate our life to, the Sankirtan, the chanting the holy name congregationally with devotees together to attract the Lord's mercy. So by chanting this Shri Krishna Sankirtan, I become at once liberated from this misconception of life. What I need? I am suffering due to my misconception of life. The whole Vedic literature advises me, advises me that you are not this material body. Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. Brahman means I am spirit. I am the supreme. Not supreme spirit, but I am spirit. The Vedic literature doesn't say that I am Parabrahman. Parabrahman is Bhagavan. Quantitatively, I am qualitatively, I am one with Parabrahman. And Brahman, there is qualitatively oneness because it's Brahman. Gold, big gold or small gold, that doesn't matter. Gold, both of them are gold. So, we need to understand this importance 
of Sri Krishna Sankirtan and hearing about it to actually, if, so that's what also Prabhupada said, if we are not convinced about chanting, we have to hear to become convinced. And recently I published my book, uh, which is a collection of quotes of Srila Prabhupada. And I want to read you one of these um, quotations here also, which is very sweet, how Prabhupada says how to become transcendental. And Prabhupada says, that by hearing, we become transcendental. He says, if we hear Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, then we remember, oh, I am eternal. It's very simple. Prabhupada says, when we chant, when we hear this Hare Krishna mantra, then we remember, oh, I am eternal. So like this, this type of quotes, how to attain pure love of God, I have compiled in this book for a benefit of devotees. If we have time, I want to read a little bit from this. But first I want to finish this lecture of Prabhupada. We started a little bit late because I thought the class is in Balaram Hall. So I was waiting there. So we may go a little bit over. So Lord Chaitanya says that Cheto Darpana Marjanam this misconception of life will be the first installment of our profit by chanting, by regular chanting this Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, by performing this Yagya, the first installment. So the first profit we will get is this Cheto Darpana Marjana, that our consciousness will be cleared, like we just read, and we think, oh, I am eternal. So why to bother about all these things? I just need to now understand more, more, how to serve Krishna, how to specific, because Krishna is a person, you know. When I want to approach somebody, I want to know what you like, who you are, and then I will try to approach you, and we will develop certain specific, very unique relationship. Not like you have with someone else, but you, what you will have specifically with me. So the same, because Krishna is a person, and Krishna's name is a person, you will have a very specific, unique relationship with Krishna. And that will also be revealed by more and more chanting of the Holy Name, especially in, in congregational chanting. And because Krishna and Krishna's name is non-different, that unique relationship that one person will have with Krishna, that type of same feeling and relationship you will have while chanting the Holy Name. Because Holy Name is not different from Krishna. So that rasa will be the same. And these feelings from chanting that you have, that will be the actual source of pleasure for the Lord. So th that's why we need to develop this mood of, um, of feelings, especially while chanting. Prabhupada says that what is the quality of chanting? The quality of chanting is the quality of feeling. So our feeling has to be very, very refined towards Krishna. And that is going to uh, be revealed gradually, gradually, as we get seriously into it. That's why we hear, in, when we go to Prabhupada Samadhi Mangalarti, there is, a, we see, Guna Rupa Lila Nam. So Nam, Lila, Guna Rupa. So this will gradually be revealed from our side and from Krishna's side, when we go deeper and deeper. But first is Nam. So we have to take shelter of that Nam. And we have to really take shelter of it, of, of Nam. And then Guna, Rupa and Lila. Our Guna, Rupa, Lila and Krishna's Guna, Rupa and Lila will be manifested in our heart. Like in Shikshastakam it said, like white lotus is opening. So it's opening like a moon. It first is a little line, moon is very thin and then it grows, grows, and becomes full moon. So the same, this realization of in a heart will come. But it will come only if we want it to come and we surrender to this yagya, to this process, to the holy name. Because if we don't want, it's not going to come. Because it's nothing, it's by force. So, Cheta Dharma the first we will see 
the first installment will be that misconception of materialistic life will be cleared. So then, there are many great sages, Prabhupada says, they are going to Himalaya, they are going to forest for meditation, just to realize what I am. Yeah? So this is a, uh, how is it, duty of a spiritualist to actually realize, or not the duty, aim of spiritualist to realize what I am. Yes, yeah? This is the question of Sanatan Goswami. Who am I? Who am I? Everyone says I'm a pundit, but I don't even know who am I. So someone will ask me, who am I? And I will say, I am Madhurya Gaurangi, but this is just not my name of this body. But actually, I don't know who I am. So I have to surrender to the holy name, and then the holy name will reveal it to me. So I have to work very hard. So that's what that's what's Cheto Darpanam Arjunam. And we say it's gradual, but actually Srila Prabhupada says here that this this is simply Cheta Darpana Marjana means this misconception, what am I not? I'm thinking I am. It is simply to understand that I'm not. It is simply we have to understand, actually I am not this. And we can understand it very shortly, within a moment. Yeah. We say it's gradual, but actually it can be as gradual as we want to make it gradual. We can make it very gradual, for lifetime and lifetime and lifetime, and Prabhupada said, we can also understand it within a moment. So that's we need to he see each word very carefully and apply it in our lives very carefully. So then that fast, speedy process will work. So Prabhupada said, so we misunderstand. We misunderstand. So therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, the mis misunderstanding of this body identification is at once removed by performing this Sankirtan Yagya. So then the misunderstanding is removed. So as soon as one becomes confidentially convinced that I am not this body, then he is protected from this fire of material world, fire material world. Then his actual life begins. Then his actual blissful life begins once one has understood that I am not this body. So then Prabhupada says, like I was just saying about this Shreya Kairava Chandrika, that this lotus opens in a heart and everything that is to be realized is revealed in our heart by the holy name. And why? How? Because this holy name is Nija Sarva Shaktis, that all the potencies of the Lord are in the name because name is the Lord. So everything is there. And if we associate closely with the holy name, is there in our tongue, is there in our heart, is there in our mind, and we associate with this holy name 24 hours a day. So how fast such kind of progress can be? Like Prabhupada said, in a moment you can realize. Yes. So so also then there is the next thing, vidya vadu jivanam, that this knowledge, this knowledge follow. And anand increase, it will always increase. It will never be boring. So this is very easy, Shri Prabhupada. It's very easy and anyone can adopt. Only to remember 16 names at any time. So at any time. And especially in this temple, here in Vrindavan, it is so easy because chanting the holy name is everywhere going on. Everywhere. There is no big effort if you live somewhere far away in some countryside where nobody else is there and you are alone. Then how much you can do Sankirtan there is maybe difficult. But still you have to do even if it's difficult. But here it is super easy. It is so much easy. So if we don't do, who is to be blamed? So we should do. So, and that is the potency of this name, what Mahaprabhu has given, and specifically for this Kali Yuga. So, and then there is another class where Srila Prabhupada 
also speaks about the, on this verse. Oh yeah, this is one thing I was looking for. She he speaks about it, but here niyamitas uh, kala. Here you don't require that you have to take your bath before chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. No. Oh, you, because you are in the bathroom, therefore you cannot chant Hare Krishna. No. You can chant even there. So such a thing, because it's actually Krishna, that very name is Krishna, then how I can remain impure? The potency is there. It makes me at once pure. Just like as soon as there is light, there is no question of darkness. These are the points of realization as we make sincerely, sincere effort to perform this yagya, particular yagya for this age. Then we make our progress. This is most inexpensive and very easy and very powerful. Why don't you adopt it? That is my request to you. So Srila Prabhupada is re requesting all of us to adopt the Sankirtan yagya and perform it everywhere. He is saying, not just little bit during Guru Puja and little bit during evening time. He's saying in a bathroom, he's saying in a bus, he's saying in a street, perform this yagya, have faith in the holy name. And then this transcendental consciousness, like it said in Bhagavad Gita, to be fully Krishna conscious and fully satisfied by his acts of consciousness, because even while performing devotional service, sweeping the floor, making the garlands, cooking, we can perform this chanting of the holy name simultaneously by doing these activities 24 hours a day. So Prabhupada requests us to do it. And then we raise to this type of consciousness when we have no duty in this world to perform. And in another class of this verse, which I won't read because I don't want to go too much over seven, uh, but still there are very important points what Prabhupada is talking. What he is saying, that this type of life of a saintly person who is full Krishna consciousness, who has become like that by the effect of the holy name, and has become like that, and he has no duty to perform, it's a not a life of a person with an idle lifestyle and just sitting without no, nothing to do. He's, he is giving examples for, of several personalities, and one of them and some of them are six Goswamis, who actually were these type of devotees who had no duty in this material world to perform, but they were not sitting idly. The really purpose of their activities were how to benefit other people in this world. That's why there is this song, Nana Shastra Vichara Naika Nipunam, Saddharma Samstapaka. So they were very. Uh, influential people, they were like elite of society. Some were rich uh, land uh, owners, some were government people, some were learned scholars and brahmanas, and all of them were living good lives. But they gave it all up, and they were in torn clothes, just some cloth that they found even in burning guts of um, passed away people, and they were just eating like here Prabhupada says, some kind of uh, rotten things that others don't even eat. But why they gave it all up? Because they were so busy of thinking about others' benefit that they had no time to think about their own lives. And we can think, we can say, oh yes, but they were all transcendental, it doesn't matter for us, I can't do it because I have this and I have that. But actually, if we talk about let's say, Raguna Das Goswami. It wasn't that he was like a stout man and he was going and doing... No, he was very skinny and very sick from this not eating. But he was not so much interested in his own welfare. He just wanted to benefit others. And that's how why he's writing these literatures. And actually, at one point, out of separation of Lord, he wanted to end his life. But then devotees told him, that you have associated with Mahaprabhu. So you are all these pastimes, what you, what you witnessed. This will so much benefit others. So you can't just go and leave. You have to stay and tell us all what you know about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So that only, that, that he can do something for the benefit of others, that only convinced him not to end his life. 
So you can see how these type of saints, they are not at all interested in their own comfortable life. Okay, I have no duty to perform. But they are only absorbed how to actually benefit everyone. So then another uh, Prabhupada gives example is Haridas Thakur. And, uh, and he is also mentioned here that he was just chanting this holy name and his concern was to benefit others. When a prostitute came to him, he was not thinking that, oh, what other people will think that one lady comes and I'm sitting with her and I'm a sadhu and she's here. He could have, he himself said, I know why you came. What was your purpose? You came to uh, m make me fall down and I could have just left immediately. Why I need to sit here with you for so long time? But I didn't, didn't remain. Because, but I didn't go because I wanted you to hear the holy name and get benefited from that. And she did. She also became saint, saintly person and followed the footsteps of Haridas. And then Haridas left. So Prabhupada writes here that we chant 16 rounds, yes? He says, this is 16. Yeah? By one stretch you can chant 16. So this is Prabhupada says that these 16 rounds we should chant by one stretch. And then after finishing these 16 rounds by one stretch, we make arrangement and increase. So you see how Prabhupada throughout these two lectures, he's continuously pointing out how much we have to dedicate our life or chanting either japa, like now he says, or previous class he continuously was pointing out how much we have to endeavor to perform Harinam Sankirtan, the congregational chanting. So that Haridas Thakur, he used to chant 300,000 times daily, 300,000 times, and he had no other business, no other business. So this is what makes us duty free when we have no other business, but to chant the holy name, and why? for the benefit of others. So then in such an elevated state, a person becomes very humble because it's said that the humility is ornament of prema. And the closer we go to prema bhakti, the more this ornament shines. So we start wearing it from the very beginning, but maybe it's a little dusty, rusty and not so shiny. So by this Cheta Darpan Marjana we polish and we have to first fake it. Then this humility will come natural. So this humility is very, very important. So we have like five minutes. I want to quickly read a little bit. Specifically there is one chapter here in this book, Humility. So, and here Sri Prabhupada very clearly says that one cannot progress in Krishna consciousness without actually adopting the humble attitude and thinking himself very insignificant. And Prabhupada says that one cannot sit, Prabhupada says, unless one is humble and meek, one cannot qualify to sit at the lotus feet of the Lord. He says, a devotee can very peacefully chant the holy name of the Lord by behaving more humbly than a grass, being torn that, than a, like a tree, and offering respects to everyone, without expecting honor from anyone else. Such qualifications make it easier to chant the holy name of the Lord. Unless one is meek and humble, to make progress in spiritual life is very difficult. The qualities of humbleness and meekness lead very quickly to spiritual realizations. So here we need to understand two things about humility. One thing is that when we are not humble, when we don't think ourselves of fallen and incapable, we will not take so much shelter of holy name. We will think, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I can also do this and I can also do that. So that's why it's suggested. If you want to do Kirtaniya Sadahari, the chanting holy name always, then is Trinada Pisanichana. You need to be humble. And you approach this holy name knowing very well that the holy name is non different from Krishna. So you approach the holy name with full humility and you chant and beg that Shuddhanam to manifest on our tongue. So that's one aspect of humility. 
that we will not approach the holy name if we are not humble. And another aspect, if we are not humble, if we are thinking that we are someone, we have some kind of status or whatever, then also the holy name, the Naam, the Shuddha Naam, which is not different from Krishna, may not be willing to actually reveal himself to us. So these are two things. We may not take shelter of holy name, not may, we won't take shelter. So un until now, if we can also judge ourselves, if we still have not taken shelter of holy name, either in a, uh, in a form of Japa or Sankirtan, and we only uh, quickly want to finish our prescribed rounds that we are ISKCON, legal ISKCON member, this is the only motivation for chanting, then how can we say we have actually taken shelter of the holy name? This is some kind of pride, more or less. That's why we are not taken, that's why I suggested Trinada P, Sinichanan, we have to be humble. And another way, if we are not humble, if we maintain that little puffed up attitude, then the holy name may not consider to actually manifest in his Shuddha form in our hearts and our tongues. So here I will end and uh, I suggest you to take seriously Prabhupada's uh, teachings. I, s I pray that you bless me that I can take Prabhupada's teachings seriously also. I wrote this book just that I can uh, go deeper in Prabhupada's teachings and, and uh, research all these quotes. If you're interested to read this also, you can read. There are many nice topics. And it's just all for our, for inspiration for us to just forget about everything and anything and just go for it. And attain this love of God, Prema Bhakti, in this lifetime, which Srila Prabhupada so much wants us to, to have. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. If anyone has any comments, please, you can express yourself. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, it happens to be the first time I'm here in your class. And uh, one of the many things that really appealed to me was the so many number of times you said, Srila Prabhupada said. You said so many times, Prabhupada says, Prabhupada says, and you quoted it. That was so very authoritative and it appealed. Thank you for it. I look forward to many more questions. Uh, secondly, what's the name of your My name the book of the name the name of the book is Krishna Will Kiss You Also. And uh, this is also a quote of Srila Prabhupada, which inspired me a lot. And I will read it just now. He writes, again Prabhupada said, <laughs> he says, you dance with Krishna, you eat with Krishna, talk with Krishna, enjoy with Krishna, and Krishna will kiss you also. Krishna is very kind to everyone, either you love him as a lover, either you love him as your son, either you love him as your friend, or you love him as your master, in whichever way you like you can love, and Krishna will respond. And the best kind, the most kindness of Krishna is because he has manifested himself in his name and he is non different from his name. So we can be with him continuously with ch by chanting of the holy name. But we have to chant. So where can we get a copy? You can get it uh, in the shop, that international bookstore, or you can get it from me also. I have some. Yes. I just have a realization in connection to what you just mentioned about chanting more or sankirtan more. Yesterday, I've been here in Vrindavan for the past two months. And I came basically because all these years I performed all the other services, but the one service that Prabhupada asked us to do, he said, Two hours I, I slept and wrote these books, and you don't take advantage of whose fault is it? They always tricked me. So I chose Vrindavan to come and focus the read. And we have a problem of plenty here, so much, you know, gracious devotees, kirtan, and all that. Anyways, 
So yesterday I had chanting, uh, more chanting to honor the uh, evening. So my chanting ended around 8.30, the main time. After that, there was some kirtan going on. And so, in the duration of two months, for the first time, uh, I thought anyway it's 8.30, I have to head back home. I might as well attend a bit of kirtan and then go. So that lasted till 9, half an hour. I was roaring kirtan. And I said, I've got to do this every day. <laughs> and while, uh, as I was just exiting the gate, it just struck me. I thought, my God, I should have been reading at that time, but I did keep them. But then I remembered Gole, Golo Kera Premadan Harina Amasan Kirtan. This is what I'm hampering for, at least technically. And it's happening here. So at least if technically I don't attend it, mm. it doesn't make sense. Mm. And it was kind of fun. <laughs> so I said, okay, so from today on, I'm going to do that. So, I'm just saying, case in point, I'm going to yes. more. And this is what Prabhupada writes in his books. So when you read his books, this is practical application. And it's actually, temple closes at 9, but you can continue staying. They sing throughout the night for a man. <laughs> yeah, it's 24 hours. So I have a question. The question is, uh, Prabhupada, uh, I think Sands of Self-Realization in other places also, Prabhupada mentions that just like um, somebody has medicine and does not, does not know its potency, what composition, what goes into it, but has it, medicine still works. And it's practical, it works. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the holy name, like you were saying, Mobi here, Mobi Ri, quotes and all of that, and Prabhupada says, one should read Bhagavatam in order to be able to chant. It's a mm -hmm. Okay. Why is it like this? <coughs> Why is it that just by hearing, I mean, just by chanting or just by doing the same Kirtan, why is it that, of course, the written word is also Kirtan, as Prabhupada says, but why is it that, you know, uh, we hear that non holy name is not different from the Lord, and yet that we have to, you know, um, imbibe so much of theory or, you know, like that to be able to chant. Yeah, actually it depends on each individual. It depends on our conditioning, something from previous life. Uh, Prabhupada, they're also saying our, our actually business is to chant the holy name. But if we are not convinced about it, we read the books to be convinced for, about chanting. But at the same time, we need to understand that the Kirtan or Sankirtan has different forms. There is Leela Sankirtan, there is Guna Sankirtan, and there is Nam Sankirtan. So reading Bhagavatam and discussing Bhagavatam it is also in a group of devotees, it is also Sankirtan. But it is Leela and Guna Sankirtan. So that is also Sankirtan, but it is Leela and Guna Sankirtan. So it is described that out of all varieties of Sankirtans, Guna, Rupa, Leela and Nam, the Nam Sankirtan is most powerful. It's most potent. But then there are different varieties of Nam Sankirtan. Yashomati Nanda Nabraja Bara Nagara. It's also Nam Sankirtan. So out of all varieties of Nam Sankirtan, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra Sankirtan is most potent. So it's not a waste of time to read or anything like this, but this Mahamantra is the most Mahamantra Sankirtan is most important. And the more people gather together, the more potent it is. That's why it's said when there is hundreds and thousands of people together chanting Maha Mantra, it's called Maha Sankirtan. So, just straight up, why isn't chanting like honoring prasadam? We don't have any seminars on books on how to honor prasadam, or you must honor prasadam every day. It just happens. Okay. So, why isn't chanting Hare Krishna like honoring Krishna prasadam? Why so much of yeah. It depends to somebody, other, some other person, it's just natural there, what just wants to do it. I mean, in the sense, those will be very few to be found. Yeah. But, but why, I mean, just like we, mm. we need to drink water, we need to honor Yeah. Drink, why doesn't it become like that? I mean, yeah, it will eventually. Why not mm. now? Why not at the, even the most neophyte nascent stage? Yeah. Why not? Because, first of all, because hardly anyone does it in a good amount. Yeah? So how can you 
for, for example, develop taste for something that you don't do. So first you do, and, and that's why it's also said in Shikshastakam yeah, that Krishna has mercifully given this uh, holy name imbibed with the full potencies, but still I have no taste for it. This is second verse yes, of Shikshastakam. So then next verse is Trinata Pisinichena Tarora Pisishna, and then that verse is Kirtaniya Sadahari. And after Kirtaniya Sadahari, taste comes. Nadanam, Najanam, Nasundari, nothing I want. Yeah? So, if we notice that I have no taste, I understand all the glories of the holy name, but I have no taste, then I have to become very humble. I am so fallen that I cannot do. So then what shall I start doing? Then I have to start doing Trinad, this Kirtaniya Sadahari. And from that Kirtaniya Sadahari, the taste will come, the offenses will be cleared and everything will be sorted. And like Prabhupada said, the revelation will come in a moment. Like yesterday, you got some very deep re revelation no? about this, why I'm not doing it, why I should do it. So it's just a little bit, just from half an hour. Can you imagine what it will be if you do it for five hours or more? And the potency of this Sankirtan, you strengthen with good amount of japa. Yeah, Prabhupada says that 16 rounds you finish in one go. So in the morning as you start, you just finish. At 7 o'clock, for example, we start doing the kirtan in the temple. Mm. And over here, sometimes 5.30 also we are not yet done. 5.30 we are starting, so we are not done with sometimes because we have so many things which we do. Yeah. So, so better not so to do all these things. Yeah. But you said so many things we do. No, okay, okay. Okay, so basically we start chanting at 5.30 and there is only one and a half hour until 7 and we are not finished. Yeah. It's always disruption. Yeah, okay. I don't, I cannot say I am no one's mentor or guru or anything, but from my own personal thing, I would say you finish your rounds. Because the kirtan is 24 hours here you can do afterwards the kirtan during kirtan yeah. why we should do, right? we should be in the kirtan yes because also as one person who does who comes in mangala arti and he's doing his rounds it's okay you don't need know what he's doing maybe he's chanting three lakhs of nam every day what do you know what he's doing no? you finish your 16 rounds I'm saying if you do three lakhs, then it may be okay. okay. But your 16 rounds, it's like so nothing. It's a minimum. It's like nothing. <laughs> Prabhupada says you can do it in one go. And now you're trying to fit in maybe in Kirtan, maybe in this, maybe in that. And Babaji also, when you said that you can stand in the bathroom, so why can't we take the Because we are wearing two and we are entering the bathroom. So why is it that, and it's in the bag, it's in the bag. I don't know. Why don't we take it in the bathroom? Just don't take. Because sometimes when we leave it outside, we forget it. Yeah. Time. So if you really very attached to holy name, you will not forget. Is it okay if we keep it inside the box? Anyway, I don't know. <laughs> Just chant the holy name. You can chant the holy name and ask the name to reveal this to you. Okay. I don't know all these small details whether you can put in a bag or not put in a bag. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna.